I was wondering how you handle the improvements that were put on properties, older properties that didn't have permits, and now they want to have them, you know, in, upgraded. Or do you do permits after the effect? After the fact, do you are those grants available to them? Um, how do you, Three questions at a time, ma'am. <laughs> How's all this work for those properties? Because there's a lot of them out there. That's like asking for a friend, right? <laughs> yeah, so I guess a high-level response for unpermitted structures is that we would still accept the building permit, right, to, to legalize that unit. Um, you would just have to submit a full set of plans with those construction details, um, and we would go through the process to legalize that structure. If there's zoning issues, you might have to, you know, move it over or, you know, change a, a window or something. It would just kind of depend on where the existing structure is is located. But if you're definitely intending on moving people into that, you should want to make sure that's legalized for safety purposes. I'll also just say, uh, last client in the city of Sacramento with a with a, an amnesty project, it was really well finished, and an inspector came out, and it was a very good, healthy, straightforward process. You kind of see jurisdictions fall everywhere on the map. So it's, you ask the question, you go, hey, what's the process for bringing an existing non-conforming unit up to code? And you get the vibe real fast. You know, cities that end in beach, they, they don't like it. <laughs> C cities that want to build housing get access to that state money they get it right and so yeah. yeah and i'll just add with respect to the grant funds so we are piloting um a program with the city of pasadena they have a legalization financing program and we are partnering with them to pair our grant funds with that program as something of a pilot in terms of looking at this legalization issue because the state's goal is to increase housing supply and increasing safe legal housing supply um, fits right in with that. So, so it is something that we're looking at. I will say that in terms of legalization, the universe of costs that would qualify for the grant is likely to be a little bit lower because our grant is available for pre-development costs only. Um, so if you're legalizing a unit, you know, if you have impact fees or school fees um, or other sorts of connection fees, um, those would be eligible for the grant, but the universe of sort of the soft costs associated with um, construction from the ground up might be a little bit smaller from a legalization perspective. Another thing that is available on Symbium is actually building permits for uh, properties that, or for in cities that have their building permit digitized. So this is also another one of those things that's really tricky to find, um, you know, cities kind of have it all over the place and on their websites uh, and sometimes maybe tricky to find, but um, if you type in your address, you can take a look at the building permits there and really check to see if some of those structures that you're a little unsure about um, when you go visit the site to see if they're permitted, you can actually take a look at the building permit history on Simim as well. I, I've got one other comment. This is a really good question, and it may need another response from Linda. <laughs> Uh, when when they capture our data at, at Sacramento County, and then you notice that it, it showed the square footage of the residents, uh, that's only the area that we know about. So if it's unpermitted and we haven't visited the property in 40 years and somebody, somebody built something, we don't know about it. So our square footage might not incorporate that unpermitted area. And my question for Linda is, I'm guessing that with all the aerial photography and the calculation of the ground floor area, are you using some kind of technology to measure what's there? That's a good question. So we actually have a bit of a combo of Jim's data from the assessor's office and um, data from, uh, oh man, I, I'm, no, it's not Google. I, uh, I'm blanking on the name, but we use a, another third party that um, does that kind of satellite imaging for the building footprint, which will give you the square footage of everything under a roof. And that can be a little different than Jim's data if you know there was an addition done. Um, the other thing to just kind of note when you're looking at building footprint data is that it also includes uh, anything that's covered that's not um, necessarily fully enclosed like a porch or a carport also gets included in the building footprint data. So that's why sometimes there is a discrepancy between the square footage 
um, for the like living area versus the building footprint area? Good question, Jim. 